Hey, and welcome back to another DaVinci Resolve Quick Tips video. I know I haven't been around in a minute, but we're back now. And today I wanna to talk about counters. We can use them to represent a dollar amount that grows over time. We can show things like channel stats and subscribers in a more visually pleasing way. And we can also use counters to do more fancy stuff like progress bars or loading graphics. So in this video, I'm gonna show you two different methods to achieve this effect. And the second way is super easy for beginners. So hang around for that. So first of all, we're gonna look at how counters are actually generated in DaVinci Resolve. And we do that using expressions. Now, fair warning, this does involve a little bit of coding, but don't panic, I'm gonna give you an example in the description that you can cut and paste to make this a bit easier. And later on, I'll show you how to achieve the exact same effect with zero coding using a preset plugin that you can just download. So first, let me show you the manual way how you can do this in DaVinci Resolve. If we come over to a blank project here, and over here on our left in our toolbox, if you're not seeing that, you can enable it with the effects tab here. We wanna come down here and click on titles. Under titles, we want to drag a text plus generator into our timeline. Now let's have a look here over on the inspector tab. Again, if you can't see that, then you can just enable it here with inspector. And normally with a text plus box, we would come in here and we would enter the customized text that we want displayed. In this case, we're going to delete the contents of text and leave that blank. Instead, we're gonna right click within the text box here and that brings up a menu and we're gonna select the bottom option here, expression. And we'll see this gives us a new input box here. Now for now, we're just going to delete the contents of that. So we can use this text box to enter in an expression, which is basically macro code that DaVinci Resolve will execute. Now we're not gonna turn this into a tutorial of how to code DaVinci Resolve expressions. That's a pretty advanced topic and definitely a whole other video. So for now, what I'm gonna get you to do is to go into the description of this video and cut and paste the example code that I've given there. So you can cut and paste this into any editor you want. So the first five lines here are the elements that we can edit in order to control the behavior of our counter. We've got the start value, which in this case I'm gonna to set to, let's say, 1000. We've got the end value, which let's say I'm gonna set that to 9000. Now I can enter in an optional delimiter if I want a comma in my thousands. I can enter in a prefix text. In this case, I'm gonna have a dollar sign, and then I got the option of a suffix text as well if I want something after that. So I could actually just add space spent. So now I should have a counter ranging from 1000 to 9000. It's delimited with a comma and it should come out as dollar sign number and then space spent. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all of this code. Don't forget to include this colon at the top. That's important. Copy that to my clipboard and then we're going to come back over to DaVinci Resolve. And I'm simply gonna go into that expression box and control V, I'm just gonna paste that into here and hit enter. And there we go, we have this counter. And if I move my timeline back and forwards, I can see here it starts at 1000 and ends at 9000. And if I just play that through normally, we see I've got a cool little counter. What's important here is that it's been generated off the expression. So we're not going to touch anything in this text box here but we can still go through and change the styles and fonts as we would with any other text. So I can change the font, I can change the color, I can change the size. Everything else will behave the same as a regular text plus box, except we've now got this as a dynamic counter. So that's the quick and dirty do-it-yourself method to get counters working in DaVinci Resolve. If you're planning on doing this more than once, this is a little bit cumbersome. It's not very repeatable. We don't really want to have to cut and paste code in between our notepad and our editor in order to get these things working. If you want to change values, then you've got to come in here into the inspector tab. You've either got to recopy this back to your, your textbook or try and edit it in line here. It's, it's, it's a bit of a hassle. So I've been working on a couple of projects that use counters and I found it to be really cumbersome to keep having to edit all this code and cut and paste it into an expression box. So I wanted a way to easily just drag and drop from my effects library something into my timeline that I can just adjust the parameters and it works. And that's what I've done. And I'm also gonna share that with you. There's a link in the description for a completely free download of what I'm about to show you. So now I'm gonna show you the super easy way to do number counters in DaVinci Resolve without any coding. So if you hit that link that I mentioned before and download the free number counter preset, you'll need to install that into DaVinci Resolve. If you're using a Mac, then that's gonna be under library, application support, Blackmagic design, DaVinci Resolve, fusion, templates, edit, titles and just drop that settings file in there. You'll need to unzip it first and then restart DaVinci Resolve. 
If you're using DaVinci Resolve on a PC under Windows, then future Craig is going to put that on the screen during editing because I haven't used Windows in decades. So now we're going to do counters the super fun and easy way. If you've downloaded that preset and installed it, we can come back over to a blank project here and in the toolbox, the same as we did before in titles, you can either scroll for it or just you can search here and just search for number counter. And we're going to just drag the number counter over to our timeline. And you can see here that it's already working straight out of the box. Now, if we go over to the inspector tab here, we can see that this has all of the usual controls that we would expect in a text plus box. Now, we've got this expression pre-populated here. We've got all the code, but we're not going to touch that this time. So if we want to change the values here, instead of editing the code, we can just come up to the top here and we can see we've got these tabs and you want to select the user tab. If you can't see it, you might need to just click this little right hand button to visualize it. And if we click on user, we can see we've got all of the parameters that we can configure for our counter. So we've got the start value, the end value and our prefix stuff, suffix and delimiter. So I can change this to, let's say, start at 5,000 and go up to 8,000 and give it a prefix of a dollar sign. And we've got the optional delimiter here. If we take away the delimiter, you might need to just rejig your timeline for it to take effect. So that's without the delimiter. We can give it a common delimiter there. And now we have that. And if we go to the beginning here, we're at 5,000 and scroll to the end, we're at 8,000. If you do need the end value to be higher than what we've got here, so this goes up to 10,000 on the slider, you can just edit this manually and that will take an override. So for now, I'm just leave that at 9,000. So we can also come down here and add a suffix. Again, if you want some separation between the number and the suffix, just add a space there and maybe a word, say spent. Again, that doesn't take effect straight away. Sometimes you just need to move the timeline here move the timeline head in order for that to take effect. And we can see we've now got a cool counter. Just like we did before, we can come over here to text and we can change all of the formatting options here. We can make it bigger. We can change the font. So there you have it. If you want to do counters, but don't want to worry about cut and pasting code and editing all that, then download this preset, install it, and then you can just head over to this user tab here and manage everything from the user interface. So there you have it. That's actually my first DaVinci Resolve preset that I've released. So hopefully one of many. Um, I hope that's really helpful for you. And if you get any issues with it or any questions about it, then please leave a comment below. I'm Craig. And if you want to see more videos like this, then please subscribe to the channel and I'll see you next time.